Okay. It's like we are on now. Right. Welcome, everyone. I don't know if anybody is there yet. Yes, the information just went out now. We are going to begin to see the very first people, the fastest and the most active people are going to come on now. Uh, welcome, welcome to another day, another day of grace, another day of blessings. Share group for two more. Wow, you are the first one again. Will you tell us where you are watching from, Shegun? <laughs> Blessings. Good morning. Niyi Adebayo. Blessings. Olukayo Day. Wow, you are the top people there. <laughs> now we are waiting for Yitunde and the showroom case from Los Angeles to join. Then everybody else will come and join. Asanatu. Blessings. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Well, 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 well. Introduce yourself, Bosse. Wow, you have become one of the most passionate from Germany. Blessings. Wow, okay. Of course, like the showroom care, I was just talking about them. Adeshewa, blessings. Akim Latifu, wow. <laughs> you have become very constant. Maria Martinez, Apostle Victor, Lynn Frank, uh, Ewa Adeniji. Oluwadare, Paul, Cheryl Cooper, Victor Budipe, Fleur Karin from France, Annie Lawson, uh, Emmanuel Bello, Paul Galeka, Christiana, Christina from California, Ishioma from Berlin, Olukayo, they said they have shared the message already. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Let's begin to share as well as we are going to uh, begin this morning's program. Let's be, go ahead and share, okay? Uh, Olukayo, they just did a wonderful thing. Go back to your front page, to your timeline, and share the message because the message today is going to be an eye opener to a lot of people and you want them to be blessed. So go ahead and share this message with your friends, okay? If you don't mind, let's go ahead and share the message. Dorothy from London, blessing, just, Justice Mike. Blessings to you. Shola Lamodi from Atlanta, Georgia. Blessings. Ikifa from Canada. Patrick uh, Taki. Okoro from London. Uh, Victor from Switzerland. Uh, Brown from Malawi. Ani uh, also said he has shared the link. Please, let's go ahead and share the link. Flora as well, uh, Fleur has also shared the link. Tammy from Alabama, okay. Lopez, good morning. Uh, Uriah De Paul, blessings from Ibadan, Nigeria. Okay, Victor Blessings says he has shared the, the link. Let everybody go ahead and share the link, okay. Latifu has shared the link, that's the Super Ego Star. Uh, Gloria Hanna, uh, blessings. Ogundikwe has shared the link as well. Let's follow suit. Lopez. From Los Angeles, go ahead and share the link. Maria Martinez has shared the link. Serge Lawson, blessings. Uh, yeah, Cooper Richardson has shared the link. Okay. Elvis, blessings. Lydia Olorunewo here. Good morning to you. Douglas from London. Osas. Uh, Boss uh, has shared the link. Andrea uh, Teofilos is here from Abuja. Walter that from Dallas. Well, we are ready to go. Ready to go. This week we have been talking about the fact that life is a school. Life is a school. And there are a lot of things that we have talked about. And if you were there last night, I had a young man, one of my mentees here with me. And he was the one doing the depression, basically. He was the one doing the review of my message in the morning. And I, I just let him go. He was so much on fire. People were writing and saying that this guy has caught the anointing of Pastor Sunday. <laughs> and he was carrying that anointing in a big way, just like sufficient did the other time. So, you know, yeah, we need a new generation of believers who will not just believe and go to church and be religious, but believers who will really walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you the message for today. The message for today is called, Information is the Cure 
for deformation. Use information to cure any deformation in your life. But the title is called Information is the Cure for Deformation. Information is the healing, is the, is the uh, cure, is the cure for deformation. You see, so many things are deformed in our lives, in our character, in our countries, in our societies, in our even family lineages. But, you know, some, instead of us looking for demons or looking for, you know, some, I don't know, some uh, ancestral spirits or like Joshua spoke about it last night, or for, what do you call it, uh, generational curses, and we are looking for generational curses and ancestral spirits to repair and to reform and to cure the deformation of our lives is very easy. God had made provision for us to be fixed no matter where you are deformed, no matter where you are feeling inadequacy, inadequacy no matter where you are feeling weakness. It doesn't matter where you are feeling that you are, you are not up to, the, up to the level or you are not up to the standard. It doesn't matter where you are feeling that you are inferior or that you are, you, are, you are just having some complexes, or you are having some imperfection. You don't need to worry about it. There is a cure. This is a principle. There is a cure that God himself had given to man, to all of us, to use to deal with any form of deformation, any form of you know, abnormality, any form of th anything that is out of order in your life or in my life could be cured, could be addressed, could be fixed. And the way, the easiest way for God to kill and to fix anything that is out of order, any deformation, any, any no sickness, any uh, curse, any no you know problem, any uh, lack of luck, any uh, lack of fortune, any ill ill fortuneness, anything that you think is not working for you, God has one cure, and that cure is knowledge information you know the bible also says that my people are perished for lack of knowledge information is equal to knowledge and also information is another proof to you that information is the cure for every deformation is the fact that you remember in the book of genesis chapter one when god came to the earth the first thing he saw first of all was that there was darkness and, and it was shapeless it was out of out of shape out of form for you know, and that is a kind of deformation. So when God saw deformation, what did He do? He released the word. What is the word? The word is information. So that is also supposed to give us some key and some to open our eyes to see some revelation that the way to resolve everything that is out of order, the 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 the, the heavenly way, the divine way, the sure banker way to solve any situation that is not all right or that you are not satisfied with in your life is by looking for the right information, looking for the right you know knowledge looking for the right keys through understanding and you'll be able to fix it information is the cure for all forms of deformation in your life in your family in your history in your ancestral family in your you know relatives family or you know uh, extended family or relatives lives or in your society in your country we could fix every deformation you know through the power of information. Now, let me tell you something about that. All of us, by the way, we should all recognize this, that we all, all of us, are a product or a subtotal of the information that we were fed with. The reason why you are the way you are today, and the reason why you reason the way you reason today, the reason why you are doing what you are doing today, and the reason why you believe the way you believe today, the reason why... Even your lifestyle is the way it is today. And the reason why you are the person that you are today is only for one reason. It is the, because of the subtotal of the information that you are fed with. The, the, we are all a product of our information. We are all a pro product of the information that we have been fed with. So we are all a product of the information that we have taken into our lives 
you know so the only way for you to correct what is not what is not in order in your life the only way to correct and fix what is out of order in your life the only way for you to fix all the ills in your life the only way to fix all the deformations in your life is by getting a new information a new set of information a new piece of information that will be totally different from the one by which you have been fed with that led to the deformation in the first place so we are all a subtotal of the information that we have been fed with so uh oh somebody is saying that they lost me lost you pastor sunday i lost the internet the network is bad can, what about now is it better now can you can you see can you still hear me are you still there let me know, please, if I, if you could still hear me. If not, I will go and try to do something for the with the with the with the internet first. Please write something. Please write something. Write it if you are able to get me or hear me or not. Please write if you can hear me. Yes, is it better now? Okay, they said they, some people say they hear me clearly. So if you are hearing me, then I will go on. All right, so the topic of today, like I said, is that information is the cure for any form of deformation. Information is the number one cure that God has. Okay, there might be other circumstances. We are not talking about the exceptional cases that some people were born, you know, you know, you know, you know, with disabilities, or some people were having catastrophic, maybe, maybe, maybe flood, maybe hunger, or maybe you know, famine. You know, we are talking about the standard situation, the standard situation, and the standard uh, remedy that God has given to all of us to fix our lives and to restore our lives, and to, you know, correct anything that we don't like in our lives. The standard solution, the standard answer, the number one answer that God has given as a remedy, as a cure for every kind of deformation or, you know, disability in our lives is the, the blessing of his word or information. You know, the reason I don't want to say the word is because some people will take that to mean just the Bible. But you can see the word of God in every sphere of life. You can see the word in nature. You can see the word of God in other books. Even in books by, that are written by unbelievers. Even the books that, that are written by you no know, specialists, professionals. You know, the word of God has been integrated in those things everywhere. So that's why I'm using information. So that's the general word I'm going to be using today. Information is the cure for any form of deformation. So whatsoever that we have that is going wrong in our life, the key solution, the key you no know, principle that God has given to us to resolve any kind of problem, any kind of deformation, any kind of you know uh, disorderliness in our lives is information. And unbelievers are using this very well. Unbelievers who don't even know the Bible, but they go for knowledge, they go and look for information, whatever situation they find themselves in, they go and learn as much as they, as much as they could, they go and do research, and they get, they gather and garner all form of information that will be able to help them, they come up and come up with a formula, with a solution to whatsoever situation they have been in. But that started not from unbelievers, and it did not start from schools, it started with God. What did God do? When God saw the first the deformation that he saw because when he came to the earth the first thing that god meant was that the earth was you know dark it was shapeless it was formless it was you know a, it was deformed it was out of order and the answer that god found to resolve that problem was to release information was to release his word god released the word and he said let there be light and light also means understanding so true information through knowledge, through the word, God fixes any form of abnormality. God fixes every form of no, no deformation. God will resolve. And you is giving us a formula. You don't have to wait for God again because that is the way God operated. 
He is showing, he has shown us the example of how we are supposed to operate. So you don't need to wait on God and say, God, now go and fix my situation. I'm begging you, send the word. No, you look for the word. Look for the word in the Bible. Look for the word in professional books. Look for the right information in, in from people. Look for consultation. Go and consult. Talk to mentors. Talk to pastors. Talk to go and find books. Do research. Go look for the information that will be relevant for your situation that you are going through. You need to go and don't just wait and say, "Oh, I'm praying. God send me word. Send me word." No. While you are praying, yes, you are praying, but don't wait. While you are praying, go and look for solution as well. While you are praying, go and do studies. While you are praying, go and do research. When you are praying, go and you no know, do uh, 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 consultation. Because if you could get the right information, if you could get the right piece of advice, if you could, if you could get the right word of advice, you would be able to fix any situation that you are going through right, right now. Every situation could be fixed. Every problem could be resolved if you find the right piece of information. So information is the cure for every deformation. Let me go, give you another proof to that. You remember when God wanted to send, he wanted to save the world after the fall of man. The thing he did, he said, he, in the beginning was the world and the world was God. God sent his word to us and the word became flesh. What does that mean? Information is what God used to even bring about salvation. Information leads to salvation. In our own case too, God sent his word and the word became flesh. And that word that became flesh became our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. What is that telling us? It's telling us that if you could get the right information, the right information, right word, right knowledge will bring about your deliverance. Right knowledge, right word will bring about your salvation. Word leads to deliverance. Information leads to deliverance. Another proof of that is that the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, make you whole. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What does that mean? That is talking about the information. The truth that you know is true information. The truth that you know is true knowledge. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you whole. So, information is the key for every deformation. It's the solution for every deformation. If, you know, instead of you fighting with Satan all the time, instead of you troubling God all the time, look for the truth. Look for the, the word. Look for knowledge. Look for understanding. Look for wisdom. Once you get the wisdom that is necessary, you will be able to come out of any situation or any problem that you are in. But the, sometimes the problem that Christians run into is that we sit down there and say, okay, we are waiting for God to give us some word. So we are looking for prophets, we are running after pastors, we are going from church to church looking for, for the right word in our situation. That is an act of laziness. And that is, you know, that is uh, putting all responsibility only on God or on men of God. Really, whatever problem you have, the information, the key to resolve it is already somewhere. It's already in, the, in, the, in, 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 in some books. It's already in some information, in some cassettes, in some videos. You just need to do research and go and, you know, and look for information. Some people, the unbelievers are finding their way. Even though they don't have prophets in the churches, they don't go to church. But they are able to find their ways and be able to resolve their problems and be able to solve their situation. Why? Because they look for, they use the same principle. They look for information. They go and use, inform, look for information and use, apply the information, use the information to resolve their problem. Now, when I talk about the fact that information is the cure for every deformation, the, the word deformation is talking about not just that things are out of order, the word uh, deformation is also referring to uh, the, uh, a situation of you know, incapacitation, that incapacita inc when you are incapacitated. Or when someone is, uh, you know, helpless, or when you, you know, you are uh, an invalid, or when you, uh, you know, you, you know, you are, uh, you know, even people that are physically challenged could be called deformed in some in, in some cases. But even in the case of deformation, even in the case when people 
are physically challenged and in the case that people don't have limbs or they don't have hands or they don't have ears or they don't have eyes, when they get the right information, they are able to come out of their deformation. Now, you know, uh, I, have, I don't know if you all know about Nick, uh, 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 what do you call him, Nick uh, 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 the, the, the pastor that is called Nick, I think Wishish, yeah, his name is Nick Wishish, the, the man that has no, he didn't have, he doesn't have two hands, he doesn't have two, two feet, he doesn't have hands and feet at all, he only has his torso. How can someone like that survive? But Nick is one of the most sought out motivational speaker in the world today. And he's gathering stadiums. Do you know the reason why? He was exposed to the right information. Even though he doesn't have legs, information that he had, the right knowledge fixed the legs for him. Even though he doesn't have hands and fingers, he doesn't have limbs. But the right information that he got fixed the problem of lack of hands for him. Any problem that you have, any deformation that you have, the right information will be able to fix it for you. Nick Vushi, for example, was born in the family of Christians and they were able to feed his spirit with the right word and he himself was able to study and improve himself and he's able to use the right knowledge, no revelation knowledge, studying to be able to fix his life. Can you believe it that a man without feet, no, no two feet, I mean, no two legs, no two hands, was living alone by himself. He was able to work and get, uh, you know, to make money for himself. He's able to get a, a job for himself. He's able to manage a house. He bought a house for himself. He's able to, uh, you know, to use computer and he's type faster than I and you type without hands and without feet. He's able to uh, manage his house, clean his house, you know, he's, he's able to even get married and have children right now without hands and feet. What, does, what, what is that? That is the top, the highest form of deformation possible. And that deformation, physical deformation, could not stop him from being successful. More successful, in fact, than most of us who don't have physical challenges, who don't have physical physical problems. So, what is that saying? Information will fix your deformation. Information will cure your deformation. Information will resolve any form of deformation you might be facing in your life today. Now, let's look at another. There is another man. I think he's from South Africa. I saw the video. I watched the documentary. And that... That is, a, that is quite an amazing story because this man is blind, totally blind in his two eyes. He couldn't, he can't see in the two eyes. And, but his vision was to become a pilot. <laughs> Someone who was totally, who is totally blind, had a vision of becoming a pilot. Can you believe that? First of all, he had a vision of driving. Then he had a vision of participating in, in, in race, in uh, race, uh, in what? In car race. So can you imagine without car, without eyes, he, he, was he was driving cars, racing, participating in car race. I cannot even do that with eyes. But this man eventually became a, a, a licensed pilot. And he has been able to fly to places where most pilots without deformation have not been able to, uh, to, 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 to fly to. So it's unbelievable, it's miraculous that because of the information, he, he, he has a video in the internet, the blind pilot is called, that how he became a pilot just by getting the right information, just by changing his mind. Because the right information will change your way of thinking. The right information will change your perspective. Right information will correct the way you'll be looking at the world. And if you could correct the way you've been looking at your world, if you could change your mindset, Everything can be fixed. So this blind man became a pilot and he has been able to fly from South Africa to America, from South Africa to, uh, to Australia. He has been able to fly over mountains. He's been able to do all kinds of miraculous things that other people have not been able to do. A blind man 
becoming a pilot. What is that telling us? Because the right information will cure and fix any form of disorderliness in your life. Let's stop chasing after demons. Let's stop chasing after prophets. Let's stop chasing after religion. Let's stop chasing after, you know, uh, men of God. Give men of God some peace. Give them some peace of mind. Let them begin to look for God. Begin to look for the right information. The word of God is the biggest source of information. The word of God is the biggest form of, is the biggest source of, uh, uh, of, of deliverance. That's why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But it, the truth is not just in the word of God. The truth and the, 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 the information that we need it could be hidden anywhere. It could be hidden. Okay, for example, if you want to become an engineer, the truth about engineering is not all, it might be a little bit in the word of God, but you need to study engineering. Then you will become the best engineer possible. When you, you know, if you want to become a medical doctor, the truth about medicine is in medical books or medical schools. Go and study it there. So you can find the truth everywhere. You can find the truth in the word of God. You can find the truth any, you know, you can just look for information that will be relevant for you in the in situation that you are in. Now, let me begin to tell you some things about information. Why is information God's cure for any deformation? Number one, information would always lead to your transformation. Information always leads to transformation. And we see that in the word of God as well. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the world. Don't be like the world. Don't be uh, like unbelievers. Renew your life always. Renew your life. Re transform your life. And the way to transform your life is to renew your mind. You can only transform your life by the renewer of your life. So he says, transform your life by the renewing of your mind. The only way for us to renew our mind, our, to, re, to transform our lives is through renewal of our mind. That is Romans 12 2. So that is another key for us, another revelation for us that information leads to transformation. If you will be able to renew your mind, you will experience transformation in your life. What is it that you, where is it in your life that you need transformation? Do you need transformation? of your finances go and begin to study everything about finances go and begin to study the laws of money and your life will experience a major financial transformation you need transformation in your family go and study everything about family how to have a good family how to have godly family and your life will experience transformation is there any you know deformation with your children study something go and look for knowledge the right knowledge to fix, to use, to fix the lives of your children. And you will discover that the lives of your children will be totally transformed thanks to the right information. Do you want to transform your country? Your, if the country can be transformed thanks to the right, to the power of the right information. The right information will lead to transformation of your country. So or you want your economy to, the, to be transformed? Look for the right information about the economy. Your, your economy will be transformed. So it is information that leads to transformation. It is information that is the cure for every deformation. The Bible and you know is the major key to this, but go beyond that, read the Bible and read all other books and do research and seek for knowledge in every other area that is in that is in that is related to your area of interest or to your area of deformation or to your area of problem or challenges. So we discover two things already. Information is the cure, God's cure for any deformation. Number two, we have also discovered that information is the key to any kind of, any kind of transformation. Now, number three thing that you, I think you need to know today is that for you to become new, fresh, and for you to pull weight, for you to pull crowd, for you to be interested, for you to become news, you must go for news. For you, sorry, for you to become new, you must go, or uh, for you, yeah, for you to become news, for you to become news that everybody is talking about, you must go for news. You know, you must go for new thing. You must go for new things all the time. 
so that people and your society will make you into news for you to become a news item for you to become a news subject you must be always be, be, be focused on getting yourself news all the time in ukraine here people write about me every three minutes and actually there was a time that every one minute there are three three things three news that come out about me in every minute, three information of course most of them are bad information <laughs> and bad news even now there are some bad news going about me in the world but it doesn't matter what people are saying but the most important thing you are the center stage you are the one that people are talking about so uh you know you you are going to be news each time you renew yourself each time you you know put more information in yourself new information in yourself you are going to become the subject of interest to people everybody would like to listen to you it's just like you people now taking your time to learn from me, to listen to me every day, there is no way you can listen to me for a week and not become news. Because you'll be talking differently. You'll be put around you will know that something has changed in your life. You maybe want we'll to listen to you now because you are becoming news because of the new things that you listen to. So if you want to be news, go for news. If you want to become new, Go for new information. That is the key. The only way for you to become the news matter, a new subject, and to become a subject of interest to the world around you is that you go for news. And the only way to, for you to go for news is to renew your mind all the time, is to study new information, study, you know, uh, update yourself, add value to yourself through information. News means information. If you will be able to get new information all the time, you will always be new all the time. And if you are new all the time, you will become news. You will become a news subject. You will become a news matter. You will become a, 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 a news that everybody is talking about. You want to become famous? You want to become uh, uh, great? You want to become successful? Always go for news. To become new... You must be go for news. And to become a news matter, a news subject, you must always renew yourself. Go for news. So, you know, the, the, the next, the fifth, I think, point that I want you to know about, uh, about uh, you know, the information is the actions you do today, your actions are dictated by your information. Your actions are dictated by your information. You, sometimes you wonder, why is it that people be, behave differently? Why is it that this one behaves this way and this one behaves this way? We are all a subtotal of our information. The information that we um, imbibe ourselves in ourselves. The, somebody could say, oh, but these people grew up in the same family. They were exposed to the same parents and to the same information. Yes, we might be exposed to the same information. We might even be going to the same church, but there are information that you hear and the information that you embrace the information that you embrace the information that you, you have taken the information that you have adapted to be part of you is what dictates your behavior is what dictates your action so your actions are dictated by the information that you have imbibed in yourself so if you want to understand why you behave the way you behave it's because you have been fed either directly or indirectly either consciously or subconsciously you have been fed with Certain information that are now responsible for certain of your actions. There are some people that don't understand why they behave the way they behave. So I remember the, the, the uh, pastor I spoke with yesterday, Joshua, used to tell me, Pastor, I don't understand why this thing happens to me. I don't understand why I behave like this. I say you behave like that because, you know, that is the way you have always known yourself to behave. Maybe from your background, from your family, from your school days. But if you want that to change, go get another set of information. Go and expose yourself to another form of information. Change the recorded information in your subconsciousness. You have to renew your subconscious by bringing in new form of information that will be relevant to the goal and to the objective that you want to attain. So you need new information for your actions to change. If you want your behavior to change, change your information. Because... Uh, you know, there is a whole process of how we become who we are. When we listen to information, that information goes to our mind. And our mind now generates our feelings. 
And what our feeling does is that our feeling begins to want to do what it feels. What it feels like is what you want to do. So our feeling generates our actions. And our actions, you know, when we do an action, if we like it, we want to repeat it. And that repetition generates our, you know, our behavior. And we begin our action generates repetition. Our repetition, the repeated action generates our behavior. And our behavior gener uh, no, generates our habits, sorry. Our actions, repeated action generates our habits. And our habits leads to our behavior. Our behavior leads to our lifestyle. Our lifestyle leads to our car no our behavior leads to our character and our character leads to our lifestyle. So uh, so everything starts with information. Whoever we are today, however we behave today, it's all started from the way we you know from the information that we are exposed to. So now, if you want to reverse all that and change the way we behave and change our actions, the only way we can change our actions now is to change the information that we let into our mind or through what we see, through what we hear, through what we study, through what we touch. If you change that information, that change information will lead to a new uh, form of uh, uh, you know, thought in your mind. The new information you get will lead to new thoughts process in your mind. That new thought process will lead to new feelings. The new feelings you have will lead to new actions. And the new actions will lead to the desire to repeat those actions and those new actions will lead to uh you know your your uh, your, your new new habits a new habit will lead to new character new character will lead to a uh, new uh 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 behavior uh new new behavior will lead to new lifestyle so that is how you change your life and that is how you change your character that is how you change your 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 thought life that's how you change your feelings that is how you change your 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 lifestyle your behavior as well and that, that it is all starting from your information it is the information that we have and the information that we are exposed to that determine who will become our the actions that we have in our lives now next point uh we our attitudes are dictated by our information you know what is attitude attitude is how you react to different things that you encounter in life especially attitude is how you react to how people behave to you when things are not especially when they behave bad to you when they behave negatively to you attitude is how you behave how you respond attitude attitude actually means reaction how you react and most of the time, if you react badly, that is having the wrong attitude, they will always lead to wrong consequences. But if, attitude, if you react to things that are happening around you correctly, and if you react positively to issues of life, that is having the right attitude. And the right attitude will always lead you to success and progress. So how do I react? Sometimes we we'll always regret our reactions. We react badly to things that happen to us. And sometimes we always say, oh, I don't want to react this way, but that is the way I react. I don't know why I react this way all the time. And some, I've heard people say that to me all the time. They say they get frustrated. I don't, they don't know why, they don't understand why they always react the way they react. It's because they have, been, they have not, you know, changed the, the word bank or the information bank in them. For you to react differently, you need to change the information bank in you. For example, uh, uh, I, I used to be irritated a lot. I used to get angry. But when I got saved, I sat down with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, love is not easily provoked. I, I meditated on that word, love is not easily provoked for two weeks. I was just on that provoke alone. I was saying, oh, so if love is not provoked, so I would think about it. What about if somebody slaps me? What about if somebody writes bad information about me? What about if they spread bad news about me? How will I react? So I meditate upon that and I begin to play so different scenario of how I will react if, you know, if somebody provokes me. And I begin to say, you know, I begin to picture my reaction. Then I go ahead and say, Okay, I don't want that. I pray about it. I say, okay, I reject that reaction in Jesus' name. I don't want to be provoked. I reject this provoke, 
for provocation and I embrace love. I would rather love. I want to respond through love. So anyway, by you know, playing that day and night. I did it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I will always be playing it over across in my mind until I saw myself, until I begin to feel that now I can react differently to provocation. Now I see myself that, in, first of all, I started reacting in my mind, in my, in, my, in my meditation, in my thought process. I see that I'm getting, I'm feeling myself with the reality of love more and I begin to react differently in, me, in my mind. So once I started seeing that my reaction is different, when provocation now comes in the real life, it, it is the, the, my reaction automatically corresponds with the way I've already programmed myself to react, to react out of love, to react out of you know, you know, patience, to react the way God wants me to react. But it's not just about anger or reaction, but it's also about, so what I did, was I sat down for two months and studied all that chapter of First Corinthians chapter 13. He said it's not easily provoked. Love is not this. Love is not that. I took all of them and I began to use them to inculcate them into my system. To embed them into my, into my life. So that way I got new attitude to all things that are happening around me. I've gone through all kinds of challenges, if you want to know. I've gone through all kinds of trials and temptations, and I'm still going. And you will not even know that I've gone through any trouble before in my life. Why? Because I am reacting according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 now. I have used 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to remold myself. That is what we all of us have to do. We have to get the right form of information that we need. The right form of information that could bring you into the place that you are dreaming of coming to. You have to dream what is the right, what, what are the right qualities, what are the right character traits that you want to have, what are the best you know, qualities that you, 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 you wish to have in your life. You have a list of them and then take them one by one and work on them and you know develop them in you like I did in, with First Corinthians chapter 13. The, you know, inculcate those truths in your system. And by the time you know, you will discover that you have remolded yourself. You have rebuilt your life. You have become another person. So it doesn't matter. You say, "Oh, I'm a, I'm I'm an easily irritated person. I'm a temperate uh, I'm a temperate person. I I get uh, I'm a no, uh, no I'm a, what do we call it? I'm a I get temp, temp uh, I'm a high tempered person. Or I I I uh, I'm easily provoked. Or this is my emotion. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an emotional person. No." Those are just excuses. You can use the power of knowledge, the power of information, and the power of the world to rebuild yourself. You, you, you can go from being emotional and being uh, high-tempered to being cool and, you know, and, and meek. It, it depends on the information you get. You have to take the information you need as the building block and use them to build a new character in yourself. Use the word, the knowledge, the information that you need to build a new, you know, character, a new virtue, a new response system in yourself. You can build into yourself the kind of person you want. You, the person you were when you were small or when you are growing up in your family is who you used to be. That is what everybody else put into you. That is what they made you to become. But you can make yourself to become another person by intentionally looking for the qualities intentionally looking for the uh, the 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 kind of you no know, your ideal person you can build your ideal picture you can build an ideal picture of yourself and go and build it through on the basis of corresponding information that will correspond to that ideal person that you want to become you can make yourself my brother and sisters you can make yourself to become whoever you want to become first of all inside that is the, why jesus said that uh, it is not what goes inside you that corrupts you, but what comes from inside of you. So you have to build yourself into the quality that you want yourself to become inside first. So if you can build yourself in, in your character, your life will change. Your environment will change. Your behavior will change. Your character will change. Your, your situation and circumstances around you will change. But you, first of all, you have to change your inner content. All of us can change our inner content. All of us can say, we can change who we are. Somebody could say, but how can I change who I am? You can. 
You know, you, you know, sometimes I've met people like my sons, my son and my daughters, my children, they are Nigerians, but they are no more the kind of Nigeria that I was because they grew up here in this society. But if you meet in, uh, their own brothers and sisters who are my niece and nephews who are based in Nigeria and you bring them here, you will not even believe that these people are these two people are Nigerians. They, my children speak speak differently. They have different accents. The people from Nigeria have different accents. They speak differently. And their belief system and the way they look at life is totally different, even though the same blood is in them. Why? Because they were exposed to different information. My children living in this society are exposed to different information. My own you know, brothers and sisters who are based in Nigeria are exposed to a different information as well. So they are having the same blood, the same, you know, you know, Nigerians, but because of the information they are exposed to, they are different. So that what I'm saying is that we can all change our content. You, you know, it depends on what you expose yourself to that determine who you are. So the person you have exposed yourself to since your childhood, it doesn't necessarily mean that is who you are supposed to be. Let's say, for example, you if you are born in not in the country where you are born, let's say you are born in Nigeria and you grew up in Nigeria to be 20 or 30 years old and that's why you are the way you were and you are taking yourself that this is me this is how I am no if you had if you yourself had been born in another country let's say Germany or England or you have been born in another culture in America you will be totally surprised that you'll be speaking differently your view will be different your world view will be different. You'll be your your belief system will be different. You'll be you know you'll be having another why even though you see the same you with the same blood with the same name, but you will be totally different because you've been exposed to another information. You no, know, in England or in America, to totally different from the one you are exposed to in uh, in Nigeria. So everything depends on what you expose yourself to. So, but instead of you to be at the mercy of the information they, they put in you when you are a child, when you are a child and when you are in school, you, you, don't, you don't need to be at the mercy of that information. You can reprogram yourself. You can now, with your own conscious mind, say, okay, this is who I am today, but I don't like this, this, this about who I am. I want to change it to this, 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 this. You can form the nature of God in yourself. You can actually create and form through the word of God, the nature of Christ in yourself. Not just in behavior, but in everything. Not just in character, but in greatness, in achievement as well. You could look for everything that you want to become in life and then come, and come, I mean, come together, do research of the corresponding information and use them to rebuild your own life and your future. So it is possible for you to rebuild your life, to form your life, totally different from what you think now the next point that i want to talk about and maybe before the, before i begin to round up this program is that the great people that we know the successful people that we know that we admire it is not because they were born to be successful it is not because they were born differently from us it's because they got themselves exposed to the necessary information that they need they got you know maybe they, they, they make themselves they went after the right information that helped them to, to, you know, to, surmount, to surmount their problems and their situations. Another thing that you need to know is that successful people are not people without problems. Because sometimes when we see great people, rich people, successful people, you know, we think that they are people who, have never, who don't have problems. Successful people, Bill Gates and people that we admire, the big pastors, they have gone through their own share of problems as well. Successful people are people also with problems, but they have the right set of information to overcome their problem. They, they go for the right information to produce better results, good results that have made them who they are today. So if you want to fix your deformation, you need to go for information. If you want to cure your deformation, you need to go for information. If you want to transform your life, you need to go for information. Because your information determines your habit. Your information determines your attitude. Your information determines your action. Your information determines your behavior. The information you are exposed to, you imbibe in yourself, determines your character. Your information that you are exposed to determines your lifestyle. And your lifestyle determines your result. So, uh, 
that is all I think I would like to uh, talk to you about today. Let's see what people are writing. Yet today says, what you expose yourself to is who you are. So be careful what you expose yourself to. Uh, Ewa says, exposure is the mother of nature. Uh, Scott say, you don't even need God for that. You just need understanding. But the word of God is the greatest understanding you could have. So that's why we need God. Ola Martin says, exposing yourself to the word of God can change and transform you. And uh, uh, Joseph say, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you. Cecile says, you are a blessing for me and my husband. Thank you. Kenneth says, hit me, sir. <laughs> I got it, sir. Keep the fire burning. Let it flush us out of our past and our failure. Okay? May God continue to refill you. You are one in a million. Thank you. Uh, Lydia he was clapping. Maybe the, and she put microphone. Maybe the sound became better. Uh, Fala, Fala Day says, God bless you, sir. Uh, Mega says, Ranti Mega, uh, Ranti Mega say, Pastor, please pray for my eye infection. In Jesus' name, I pray for you and I agree with you for the healing right now in Jesus' name. Mashu says, actions are detected by the information we are exposed to. Yes. Uh, Evangelist Temi Tokwe said, information leads to transformation. Beautiful. Uh, Lydia says, alone only of course, your actions are dictated by your information. That is true. As, as song says, to become news, I must go for news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Lydia says, if you are new all the time, you will become news. <laughs> Bami Dele says, morning, morning to you too. Uh, Douglas says, I celebrate you, sir. Thank you. Matthew says, good morning, pastor. Morning to you as well. Yet today say, this is solid truth. Christina says, hallelujah, knowledge is power. Louisa says, thanks for the message. If you want to become new, go for news. Jennifer says, for you to become news, you must invest in new things. Learn something new every day, and that will make you news and not a nuisance. <laughs> Jennifer, that is so cute. Not nuisance, yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Tammy says a new we will become new creation through news. <laughs> and Lydia says, Yes, we become new new news each time we develop ourselves. Cynthia says, Yes, hallelujah. Onyeke says, uh, glory. Uh, Mashu says, information is the cure for deformation, for every deformation. Christina says, wow, 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 this is awesome. Julia says, amen. Bosse says, Pastor Sunday, the network is bad. Oh, can't hear. Well, I'm sure we we'll manage to finish it one way or the other. And while we are, if you are still here with me, please go and share this with everybody we will try to put the, the 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 recording on youtube tonight but we only do it on youtube later on at the end of the day so it will be there tomorrow morning or tonight later after midnight uh so uh please go and share this with people it's going to be on facebook as well the video department yetunde says according to romans 12 to information we always lead to improvement and transformation that is true well favored said yes i have oh okay about the, about the internet connection well i'm going to work on this internet financial by the grace of god i'm going to fix it as fast as possible florence says information leads to transformation gloria says wow 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 i'm loving this preaching every day praise god Christina says, information always leads to transformation by the renewing of our mind. Jennifer says, if you are not informed, you will not, you will, if you are not informed, you will be deformed. <laughs> that is so true. If you are not informed, you will be deformed. Uh, Victor says, same. Fumi says, I can hear anything swap from home. Oh, there's Wi-Fi again. 
God help you. Uh, well, 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 that is all about that. Jennifer says, information reduces frustration. Information you feel will fix your deformation, Florence says. Uh, Lydia says, the line isn't good. Okay, we've, we're over that. Fumi says, Pastor, you are breaking now. Thank you. Okay, greetings from Sarah. Ewa was helping me that Nick Wushish is his name. Yes. Well, uh, there is so much for us to learn. And I welcome you here every day. Jumi Babatokwe says, information leads to transformation. Very deep words. Akim Latifu says, thank you, Pastor, for these messages. Adebayo says, Pastor, thank you for this information. It is the strong meat and strong bone of God's word. I need to listen and study this message several hours daily in order to get it into my system. I love you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, as I now say, may God increase you. Peace says, thank you, sir. The word of God is complete. All we need is to search and apply the right information. Keep searching and knowing every day to remain on top. Bless you, Pastor Sunday Adelaja, Christy says. Yemi says, if you are not informed, you will be deformed. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. I would like to ask you that uh, you share this message. Let's share the message with our friends and with our colleagues. And then I come back to tonight again at 9 o'clock Ukraine time, 9 p.m. That is, that will be 7 p.m. Nigerian time, 7 p.m. English, English time, British time, 7 p.m. European time, Central European time. And that is uh, 2 p.m. Uh, American time, Eastern time in America. And uh, and then tomorrow morning we'll be back again, 7 a.m. Uh, sorry, 7.30 a.m. British time, 7.30 a.m. Nigerian time, 8.30 a.m. Uh, Central European time, and 2.30 a.m. American time, Eastern time, and 9.30 a.m. Ukraine time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you tonight. Blessings.